and I'm trying to talk while I'm jumping, allow you to, uh, let me get killed and I'll start over. Um, a swipe is a much easier, so if you imagine you're holding this in your hands uh, on a phone or a tablet, uh, being able to swipe was much easier. So I decided to modify the starter kit. So the base uh, starter kit does not have one I'm going to show you. Uh, I've modified it to add these things. Um, so I wanted to add swipes. So if, you're not going to be able to see my finger, but if I swipe up, I jump. Uh, if I swipe down, I crouch. And then if I swipe to the right, I shoot. Um, and it makes it super easy for anyone to play the game. The controls don't get in the way. And so let me so show you how I implemented that. Let's go ahead and open up here. Uh, it's in the player object. Uh, in the crate, I remember the crate code is when your uh, object gets instantiated. Um, and so we're going to set um, some different variables, uh, either starting x and starting y, or ending x or ending y. And uh, actually, the swipe equals false I was using for testing, not necessarily needed. But this will give you the variables you need to track when you're working in your game. Uh, then I uh, added a couple events. Remember, adding an event, you can uh, click on the Add Event. And what I did was I did a uh, global left pressed. Uh, remember, mouse key, uh, mouse events uh, can work for touch events as well in Game Maker. So I did a, a global left pressed. And very simply, when someone pressed, um, I set the X and the Y from where they started. Again, uh, swipe is set at no swipe because once I press, I haven't actually done anything yet. And then finally, there's another event called global left released. So uh, I don't just want to know when I start. I also want to know when I end. So if we look at that code, it gets a little bit more complex. Um, so you can see the variables uh, that we created in the create event are, are now setting um, the x and the y depending on where I took my finger off of it. Um, I want to make sure it's a long swipe. So you can see I'm uh, making sure it's 64 pixels at least. Um, and then I want to determine, um, did we uh, go right, did we go left? Uh, did we go up and did we go down? And so uh, if it actually is going right, I'm going to um, uh, play an audio sound for the bullet. Um, and uh, I'm basically doing the same thing that I did with the buttons. Um, the bullet's uh, going to create an instance of a bullet. It's going to start from the uh, object player um, right where he's at. Um, and it's going to uh, uh, move over from there, starting at the X and the Y of the player. Now the bullet is a little uh, more complex. If I want to uh, have it actually come from his gun, I have to have different code. And we're not going to dive into this different code of whether he's crouching, whether he's jumping, or whether he's running, because his pistol is going to be at different places. So that's what all this code is for. Um, if I'm swiping left, it's doing nothing. I don't care about that code. So I just have something that, to kind of swallow that. Um, then down here, I just want to uh, tell if it's either down. And if it's down, I'm going to uh, change the sprite player index, index to the sliding guy. Um, and I'm going to set an alarm. The alarm basically changes him back to standing uh, after a certain amount of time. And I'm setting his speed. And then if I'm swiping up, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm playing a sound, his jumping sound. Um, and I'm changing his sprite to sprite player jump, uh, which is up in the air. And I'm making him jump up in the air just a bit by setting his v-speed to negative. So uh, very simple to do, uh, very simple to add to your game. But what if you want something a little bit more complex? And we're not going to uh, dive too deeply in this, but one of the things that um, I struggled with when uh, making Dave in the Cave was having a uh, controller on there that um, responded well to uh, user input. And one of the things uh, that I'll share with you that the feedback I got from users is when you have the buttons and you're not looking at the buttons, you sometimes couldn't hit the button exactly when you're transitioning from left to right, or even if you're sliding your finger back from left and right, they had trouble with that. So um, I'll show you what Dave in the Cave does. Let that pop up here in just a second. It 
it's a, it's a little bit bigger game, so it takes a little bit longer to compile, especially the first time when I pop it up here. And so um, you can see that I'm actually even telling uh, the user how to use it. Anywhere I touch on the screen, on the left-hand side, I set a joystick. And if I keep my thumb down, actually, let's see if I can do it with my finger. I can't, uh, not on this touch screen. And then I split the screen in half. And on the right hand of the screen, if they click or touch anywhere on there, it makes them jump. So he slides over here and, and jumps on this side. Uh, and I found that they could never get lost because their thumb always hits somewhere over here. Uh, and they just drag it left and right. And if they leave go, he knows he stops. Um, so this, for me, uh, gave me the ability to uh, have a very smooth experience for the user. But if we look at that code, Objects. That joystick would be fun on the phone. Yeah, that's, that's where it was uh, uh, designed for, mm -hmm. is to make it, because the phones can be so small, although I had the nice 1520 and a ton yeah, of real estate. Of on that. the smaller <laughs> phones, uh, it was really hard with the, with the joy pads. Um, so we're not going to dive into uh, all of this code. Um, but you can see what I had to do here is, is a little bit more complex. So uh, just like a lot of stuff in Game Maker, um, it can start with simplistic stuff. You saw those push buttons were pretty simple. Um, they were just saying, what region of the screen do I want to start with? Um, and then draw an image on top of that, and he pushes that. It went to the swipe, uh, which is a little bit more complex. Um, it wanted to uh, grab where on the screen and where he took off the screen and then add some code there. Uh, and then you go to a control like this where we're starting with collecting uh, device IDs. Uh, we're, we're checking to see uh, what the sprite is. We have to, if you can imagine, find out where I touched and then put the uh, image actually right where my thumb's touching. Uh, and then you have to actually have the ball in the middle kind of stretch to it. So this is all the setting up the variables that I'm going to need uh, in it along with the direction, the distance, how far is the, the ball being stretched from it. Because um, I'm actually taking his speed and changing his speed accordingly based on how far they're stretching it. So if they're barely moving the ball, he goes slower than if they take the ball and move it over a lot. Uh, and that, that's all in the uh, step procedure here. You can see that I'm uh, grabbing to see uh, which way he's doing it, uh, whether he's doing it uh, right or left, um, and uh, the the distance um, based on the direction uh, here. And then, of course, I have to uh, do nothing in draw but draw GUI. Um, all this code, what this does is uh, find the place on the screen, and then it uh, will draw the joystick on the screen right where I touch. So many different options uh, when you're working with on-screen controls. Um, and those are just a few of them uh, for you to play with. So along with that is um, imagine playing a game, imagine playing uh, like uh, Dave in the Cave and uh, getting through and getting you know, 20 pieces of gold or 50 pieces of gold and then you turn off the game and you don't have your gold anymore. Or you get past the first five levels and you turn off the game and you've got to start over and uh, you know, start over from the beginning. It would be a very frustrating game. It would be Flappy Bird type frustrating of game. Although. That seemed to work for him. So um, you want to have a, a way to save uh, data in your game. And so um, we're going to talk about that right now. OK, so I'm going to bring up, um, I, actually, I'll just talk about it. So in GameMaker, uh, there's a um, uh, construct uh, called DS Map. Uh, DS map is a very simple uh, key value pair. Um, you set the key and the value one associated with that. And all throughout GameMaker, you can use DS map like an array to store your data. And so that's what we're going to use. Um, let's go ahead and uh, look at uh, DS map script and look for in scripts. Actually, let me just open up an object. find a very specific object, object main UI. Uh, and you can see here that 
um, I'm first uh, checking to see if the DS map exists. Um, and uh, if it does, uh, global save map, uh, then I'm going to open it up. Now, the way you work with uh, saving data in um, Game Maker is you save it to an any file. And um, when you save it to an any file, um, you can uh, write uh, strings out to it for the data you want to save. This one's grabbing everything I've saved. You can see that um, this one's uh, grabbing the fact that someone's done the rating. Um, so on, after level 11, uh, I, I determine whether they've done the rating or not. And I want to save that because I don't want to show that screen again if they've already done it. So you can see that um, I'm saving that to it and then I save it to an any file. Um, in addition, you can see uh, we talked about Flurry uh, last time. I'm also saving that to Flurry so that I can notate that for later uh, as well. Uh, while I'm in here, I want to show you something. This is something that um, is very minimal in Game Maker. And one of the great things about Game Maker, and we've kind of briefly touched on this, is the fact that you can uh, write a game once and have it on many different platforms. So um, I put it on uh, Android, I put it on iOS, I put it on Windows Phone, um, I could have put it on a bunch of uh, other devices as well. And Game Maker allows you to do that with just a, a slight uh, bit of change to your code. Uh, most things will translate to whatever uh, one you're doing it for, but there's a few cases where you want to uh, change different stuff. So if, uh, for example, here's a good example, if I want them to review uh, my app, um, I want to send them to the right place to review it. So when they click on a button, if they're on a Windows phone, I want to send them to our marketplace. And you can see it still says Zune, uh, by the way, is the URL um, to get to our marketplace, uh, review app, I pass it my app ID, etc. Um, but obviously that's not going to work if I'm going to send it to iOS or Android. So this little case statement uh, and the use of uh, the keywords uh, OS Android, OS iOS, or OS Windows Phone allow me to, with the same click of the button, uh, send it to, to different places. And there's a few places like this um, where you'll have to have code separated depending on the platform, um, but they make it really, really easy to use. Um, if you'll notice, uh, one of the things that um, I always get asked uh, when we talk about this is um, how do you encrypt the data? Um, GameMaker makes it very easy. Uh, if you just use DS map secure save uh, when you're saving the DS map, uh, it'll encrypt it for you. And there's an alternate one that uh, sends it back for, for you to pull back up the data. So it makes it really, really easy. If you actually want to check out the data, I actually made it so it wasn't um, encrypted so we can actually look at it. It's just going to be C users Daniel app data local uh, Dave in the cave and you can see the any file here. Um, this one actually has nothing saved. It was probably the other game maker right here. Nope. So I, I must not have run it on this PC. So it'll save it here. Uh, this one's not encrypted, um, but it'll save it this uh, any file different places depending on the platform. It's going to save it uh, Windows Phone one place, uh, Android one place, and iOS one place uh, depending on the platform. But again, it does that all for you. So uh, in this module, we talked about uh, adding controls uh, to your game, um, controls that allow you to uh, uh, use swipe, uh, controls that allow you to just do very simple press uh, of, the, of the screen, um, and so a little more complex joystick. I showed you a little bit around uh, the type of code you need to use that, and then a very simple walkthrough of uh, how you save data uh, in GameMaker. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, we're going to take a very quick break, and uh, we'll see you back here for the next module. Welcome back to uh, Creating 2D Games with Game Maker Advanced Techniques. Uh, I'm Daniel along with Natalie uh, once again. Uh, and in this section we're going to be talking about, or this module, we're going to be talking about optimizing for Windows Store. Um, and why is that important? So uh, in some of the games that you'll play, uh, you'll see on different phones, um, like Dave in the Cave is on Windows Phone, Windows uh, or iOS and Android. Um, and 
if you want to put it on a uh, thing like Windows 8, you've got to be able to interact with and take advantage of the things that Windows 8 gives you, things like uh, charms, things like um, the app bar, uh, things that like search and et cetera. So you want to be able to easily incorporate that into your game. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about that today. We're going to talk about uh, pausing uh, and adding snap to your game, which is a feature, a great feature of uh, Windows, Windows 8. Uh, and then we're going to talk about working with charms. And uh, Natalie is going to go ahead and uh, walk us through this. Yeah, so if you haven't seen all the cool features of Windows 8, or even if you are, we're just going to take another look at them over here on my screen so we know what we're working with. So here on my start screen, uh, so first, live tiles. You can see over here, if you wait a couple seconds, see we have the chicken soup updating with pictures and words. So automatically, when you look at the start screen, your eyes kind of flicker over to what's moving and what is flickering itself. So that's a really good way for you to add any updates that are happening in your game, whether it's um, like a high score or any news that you want to share on there, maybe someone that's at the top of the leaderboard or just beat today's high score. You could have that as a dynamic changing life tile so that when someone pins it to their start screen and they're scrolling through, then that's automatically what their eyes are going to. It's going to your game. It's getting more people wanting to play your game when they're walking around their tablet showing their friends. Or you know, like rewards they get in the game, yes. or uh, tokens they've gotten, et cetera. Yeah. Cool. 